Don't forget to turn the clocks back this weekend. This Sunday marks the end of daylight saving time across the country, with the exception of Saskatchewan. The time switches at 2 a.m. Most, though, will turn their clocks back at midnight or before they go to bed on Saturday. And while we may luxuriate in knowing we have an extra hour to sleep in, what does the time change actually do to our internal clocks? For more on that, let's bring in Dr. Charles Bay. He's a physician at the Sleep Disorder Center at Cleveland Clinic, and he joins me from Willoughby Hills in Ohio. Good to see you. Hello. Dr. Bay, tell me a little bit about that. We get so excited. We think, oh my gosh, you've got another hour to sleep. Isn't that going to be great and healthy and you're going to feel great? But what's the reality of how this time change affects us? So this time change affects everybody in the sense that uh, it does take a little bit of time to really adjust our internal clocks. However, most people are sleep deprived. So this free hour really is a way to help people get back to where they should be. And now is the time to really focus on getting back to a regular sleep schedule. And okay, so when we do that and then we have this extra hour, however we end up you know, using it, how long does it take to get your internal clock to recognize that time change? Probably you know, for this one hour change, uh, it can take up to a day or two for some individuals to really adjust their internal clock. But for some people, that is a very big deal. It's a very, and do you see, you know, in terms of your work, do you see people with sleeping difficulties as a result of the change, either forward or back? Typically, not so much, only because it is a change of one hour. Most of the problems are seen in the spring when daylight saving time starts again. And when we lose an hour, and again, because we're sleep deprived, that's when it can become more of an issue for that day or two. Uh, there's a spike in uh, car accidents that's been reported with that change in time in the spring. And, you know, let me ask you about our circadian rhythms, because we talk a lot about that, I, you know, whether it's daylight saving time or, whether, or jet lag, you know, how difficult is it to, to adjust that? With enough preparation, it is not um, hard to adjust, but it does take uh, kind of pre-work. So if you don't take time to adjust your, the times when you go to bed or wake up before a trip, then you will be affected when you uh, arrive in your new destination. So as long as you know where you're going and how much time change is needed, you can make the proper adjustments beforehand. Is there a difference between the way adults would adjust to this or the way children would? Usually it's pretty much the same. It all revolves around uh, when you go to bed and when you wake up. So what do you tell people in terms of, I mean, yes, it's only an hour, but in terms of their rhythm and wanting to stay alert and healthy, what do you tell them in terms of adjusting to a time change? Well, in terms of the, this weekend, the, really the key is not to you know, take advantage of it in terms of staying in bed longer. The, the key thing is to get up at the same time, <laughs> knowing that the you know, clock is almost adjusted for you, but then go to bed when you're tired uh, the, the following night and just stick to a regular routine. Okay. All right, Dr. Charles Bay, pleasure to talk to you about this. Thank you. Thank you.